On today's show, Harley Davidson unveils the production Livewire electric motorcycle, how Elon Musk personally gets involved in the testing of autopilot, and just who is that mysterious fact checker on the Tesla Motors Club forum. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, folks. No, don't adjust your calendar or your clock. This is a slightly earlier than normal Ecotech Roundup show, as I'm going to be on a short break this coming weekend. Therefore, I figured it would make more sense to give you the news roundup for the week thus far then release it in three days and risk being really out of date. You wouldn't want that now, would you? If you're a fan of two-wheeled electric transportation, you'll like this first story. It was the 2018 EICMA motorcycle show in Milan this week, and at that show, Harley-Davidson unveiled its production Livewire electric motorcycle. It's quite the looker with style that's unmistakably Harley. I almost want to say there's an air of Electroglide in that light housing at the front. While no official specifications or prices have been listed yet, we can tell you that it comes with level 3 DC quick charging as standard, meaning you'll be able to recharge for the next leg of your ride in about as much time as it takes to grab a quick bite to eat. Personally, I can't wait to get a ride when it enters production next year. It's official. While the 2019 Jaguar I-PACE managed a European WLTP test cycle range of 292 miles, 470 kilometers per charge, just released US testing for the same has given it a paltry 234 miles per charge. That's 377 kilometers. Given the US EPA test is closest to real world, that's a big disappointment, especially if you consider that the I-PACE has a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack that's far larger than the Chevy Bolt EVs or entry level Tesla Model X's packs, both of which can travel much further per charge. Lime, the Alphabet and Uber-backed scooter share service that's popular in many cities around the world, will soon be bringing its service to the city of Seattle. But unlike most places where it offers bicycle and electric kick scooter shares, it will bring Lime-branded electric cars along too. Reportedly, the two vehicles in consideration for the Seattle service alongside electric scooters are the Fiat 500e and Renault Twizy, a European two-seat city runabout. In Europe, the Twizy is allowed to travel at up to 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers or thereabouts. But thanks to US regulations, any Twizies used in the US would have to be restricted to 20 miles per hour, 30 kilometers per hour, as they were when San Francisco-based Scoot trialed them last year. As I detailed in our last show, Faraday Future is in a pretty dire way, having lost some of its top execs and furloughed some of its staff last week in a last-ditch effort to stay afloat. Well, now it appears that some Faraday Future employees have turned to crowdfunding to help staff, launching a GoFundMe page to raise $50,000 to help employees avoid financial trouble while Faraday Future scrabbles to find more capital. It's super sad that this is happening, and it's good to see that the GoFundMe exists, but I suspect those affected will be looking for new jobs too. Reducing the amount of cobalt in a lithium-ion battery is something that the electrochemical industry has been working hard on for years, not only because it helps lower the cost of battery packs, but also because it reduces the reliance on the cobalt supply chain, a metal that is mined in the politically unstable Democratic Republic of Congo, often by child miners. This week, Kenan Sahin, a well-known electrochemist whose previous battery innovations have become used around the world, unveiled Gemex, an invention that's already been gratined patents around the world, and he says could reduce cathode cobalt content to as little as 4% compared to the 20% that's average today. Sahin says he's already had one automaker agree to license his technology. For more than three years now, we've seen Tesla roll out increasingly advanced versions of its vehicle operating system, including in those over-the-air updates, more and more advanced variants of its autopilot semi-autonomous driver assistance package. Testing autopilot releases before they're unleashed on the public is, of course, a very important job. And this week, a report says that Elon Musk gets stuck in helping out with that testing, running the latest pre-release autopilot software on his own personal cars. Interestingly, too, the report suggests Musk has a special software hack enabled to make his car's autopilot behave a little more aggressively than it does in publicly released software. Knowing what I do of Musk, that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. 
Following the fatal collision earlier this year in Arizona, when one of its semi-autonomous prototype vehicles hit and killed a cyclist as she walked across the road at night, Uber has filed an application with the Pennsylvania DOT to resume its autonomous car testing in Pittsburgh. Under Pennsylvania state law, fully driverless autonomous vehicles are prohibited, meaning that Uber would need a safety driver behind the wheel. But apparently the city of Pittsburgh is going one step further. It wants to limit the speed that these autonomous vehicles can travel to 25 miles per hour for safety reasons. I'll keep you posted on the outcome. If you're outside of the US or Canada and patiently waiting for your Tesla Model 3, you'll be pleased to know two different things occurred this week that may mean your car isn't too far away. First, Tesla has registered a series of VIN numbers for European spec cars, meaning European testing will soon be underway. At the same time, Tesla has told its first Chinese Model 3 customers that they should expect deliveries of their cars to start in March next year. Sure, it's a pretty long way away, but it does give you something to look forward to. Sadly though, just like the UK, Ireland, Australia and a handful of other right-hand drive countries, Kiwis will still have quite a wait before the Model 3 arrives because Tesla has said right-hand drive is the last variant being made. Sad face. Tesla may already have an order book full for the electric semi, but that doesn't scare Daimler's truck division, which confirmed this week that its own development on production electric trucks is progressing far more quickly than it had originally expected. Stating that the best battery solution will win in the electric truck segment, adding that it's all about energy consumption, Daimler's head of trucks for North America, Roger Nielsen, said that Daimler would have the highest number of electric vehicles in the commercial segment by 2020. It looks like the battle is on. The Boring Company is getting ready to host a special event on December 10th to showcase its first test tunnel built under Los Angeles. And this week, Elon Musk published a video of the tunnel in its entirety, saying he'd walked the entire length himself. The tunnel isn't particularly exciting per se, but Musk says he wants Tesla to bring some electric cars along to the launch party to add maximum enjoyment to the opening and the day-long Ride the Tunnel event the Boring Company intends to hold the next day. Tesla's power packs have proven really popular with homeowners around the world who want to store power generated from solar panels on their roofs or just want a way to store emergency backup power in the case of a blackout. Similarly, we've seen power banks gain popularity with power companies around the world looking to stabilize and green up their grid, such as the massive power bank installations that we've been seeing in Western Australia. Well, now there's a new trial taking place in Meadow Springs, Western Australia, where a single Tesla power bank has been set up in a small community operating as a grid tied storage device for all the homes it's connected to. Each home taking part in the trial will be able to store and use up to eight kilowatt hours of power in the power bank at a time. And finally, online, nobody knows that you're a dog, at least. That's according to the internet meme. And it turns out too that nobody knows if you're Elon Musk or not. You see, in the last few weeks over at the Tesla Motors Club forum, there's been an enigmatic and prolific poster by the name of Fact Checking, who's been replying to posts concerning everything from Elon Musk's thought processes to Tesla software and Tesla shorts. Tesla says it isn't Musk, but when Musk made the same joke on Twitter that Fact Checking had made earlier in the week, well, that got people wondering. Elon? Is that you, Elon? And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, send it our way and we'll read it. In the meantime, I hope you have a great weekend, that the rest of your week goes really well. And I'll see you in about 10 days when we get back to our usual schedule. You can find out when we upload new Ecotech goodness by hitting the bell below. Oh, and while you're at it, don't forget to switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Go on, do your bit and help keep emissions as low as possible by getting your electrons free of those nasty greenhouse gases. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.